The beer cold though? That's for real. Are we talking about it? style? Are you going to celebrate the You've got to celebrate it. Yeah, yeah. And then, so I've seen bits, and I know that you've always got that hat on. <laughs> No, oh, but look, we wish you the best of luck for the rest of the what season. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Welcome to the Bogey Boys podcast. You're joined here by Kevin and Mark, as always. We've got a guest, Mr. Ewan Ferguson. How's things, brother? Hey, then, Trips. Doing good? Very good. 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 Troops, I haven't heard that for a while. <laughs> Just in a... Wait, so you're both, both from Liverpool, then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Both Everton scouts. Or, Everton or Liverpool? Everton, of course. What about you? Uh, you know what? I'm, I love football, so I'm such a neutral when it comes to the English Premier League because I love Rangers, so I'm a Stevie, I'm a Stevie G fan. So um, <laughs> there uh, you go. Um, but apart from that, I'm, I'm a neutral in English football. I just love, I love watching all the English stuff. When you support a team like Liverpool, Everton, or like Rangers, and you're you get so into it, don't you? When you watch another oh, team, yeah. you don't really care. You just want to see a good game. Yeah, definitely. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Is that- with the start, then I feel like we're on your podcast. <laughs> uh, no, no. I can chat, I can chat. I can chat. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, it's like the first question we've ever been asked. Oh, oh really? Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm good. I'm good at <laughs> <You're good, laughs> it. Anyway. If it all goes tits up, you can, uh, you're always got a job with the bogey boys anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll sit in between you and the question office. <laughs> <laughs> How's things at the minute, mate? All okay, yeah? Golf wise? Uh, it's been. Quite good. I've, my flights have been cancelled to Dubai twice now. Oh, I'm supposed no. to be going out there practicing and getting ready for first tournament. Was supposed to be Oman, um, but that's been took off the schedule. First tournament for me, sorry. Um, and then South Africa, but earlier on in the year, T Challenge Tour events there took off the schedule as well, just because mm-hmm. obviously everything that's going on. And then um, so every time I get I get excited to go away or something like that, it's just it's, it's taken away from me. Oh, but um, but no, that's just the way it is right now, and obviously a lot of people have got it. Tougher than me, but um, I uh, just can't wait to get going to start golfing again. Well, what's the golf this setup in Scotland like now? Are we under the same rules as England. I think I've seen. Yeah, well, we're yeah. allowed to go. To, we're allowed to go to the range and stuff yeah. like that, which is, which is good. At least we can um, still go. I can still go to like my course, local course and stuff like that. You know, you can't really putt and stuff like that. It's soaking and the greens are mm. greens are gas now, but it's a good. Um, at least we can still go. I spoke to a few English boys then then your way that are like, oh, I can't even go to the range. Can't do nothing. <laughs> Must be pretty tough, so I'm lucky Amen. for that. I'm grateful I can go to my, my local range and hit balls. Yeah, That's sick. definitely, mate. Definitely, yeah. So, um, what's what is the first tournament for you? It's looking like right now it's maybe Cathar Masters, which is the 11th of March. So, I'm looking forward to that. It's not too far away. I'm yeah, probably going to go out a week before into Dubai and practice a bit. Um, I won't be able to fly direct there now, right enough. I'll have to go like London and then London. Uh, there probably which is fine and I can practice for a bit before I get to Qatar and then there's two events in Kenya after that as well and they added to the European tour schedule so looking forward to that just to kind of get going hopefully start off the season well a bit of confidence yeah. by me brilliant stuff Definitely. well look like we say appreciate you taking the time to speak to us and, and providing no. your story and your insights mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, people who listen to these podcasts now they know the you know the script with these now it's just to provide some insight to the next proper yeah. really speak, that are coming through and um, provide your story and, and, and what you've been through um, so with saying that obviously back in, back when it all started for you what was the reasons you got into the game uh, I'd probably just say just like my dad playing you know just general simple stuff really my dad always played um I used to just follow him the course and just you can't help but just like oh, just give me a shot you know just a young yeah. spoiled brat he's a shot hit it and if it was rubbish I don't want to play anymore if I had a good one I'll keep it until I had a bad one but no it was good I just enjoyed um the kind of watching him my dad was quite good he got down to plus two and won like club championships and he was getting like course records in the areas and stuff like that and I always thought that was dead exciting that yeah. when he went to a course and stuff people used to like say, Mark is a really good player and I used to think oh, that's my dad they're excited and then you just kind of go on with it and then I started playing quite well and just kind of took it off from that yeah brilliant. So what, when you say quite well what age are we talking have you got a handicap and stuff or yeah I mean I'd say I was when I was like 12 13 I started playing in like national events you know like nice. Scottish tournaments and stuff Um, but like obviously at my age group so I played like English under 14s and the, which was so big at the time. Everyone from all over the world were coming with their like national teams and coaches and psychologists and stuff at that age. It seemed like mental. 
Um, and then we used to, I remember finishing like, I remember finishing second in the Scottish under 14s. And that was quite a big deal at the time. And then like called up to like play for Scotland against Holland. Um, over in Holland. And it was just like, oh my God, this is going really well. And then you just get excited, the buzz off it. And was, that the first, was that the first time you were introduced to the Scottish national team? Was it around then? Yeah. Yeah, 14. Um, just playing like, but it seemed at the time there were massive, massive deal the matches. Now looking back, it's, but to be fair, they are quite a big deal because I played, I played against people then that I see now, like on on tour, and it's like you can still remember playing against them. And it's like sometimes when you walk by me, you always remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even then, even though you're only like fourteen, <laughs> but um, there's always there's always needle and needle in this game, isn't there? Yeah, it's one of them. No, it's uh, when you're under fourteen. What else can you really do? It's the pinnacle of what you're is put in front of you, really, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's just and then. Yeah, you just keep playing and trying to get better. And then when you start playing again in these big events, you kind of just strive for more, don't you? Yeah, so. definitely. So talk to us a bit about the Scottish setup then, because we've we've had a lot of professionals on the, these podcasts who had uh, mm. boys in the English route. What was the Scottish boys like in, in general? Uh, it was really, it was an amazing setup. It was really, really professional. Like, first of all, you have to get in with through results. I, I won like, like my county championship as well when I was like 14 and that got me into like the champions of champions which is all the county champions of the Scotland playing these tournaments and you play well in there and then like all these coaches and stuff they're all come to come to watch you know, I remember a few guys there that I'm quite close with used to feel like they're nervous when they were there because they were like oh it's just to get into the national like they're watching me and you know um, which is all a good part of dealing with pressure and stuff growing up um, and when you get in, it's like it's put right through to you, like stats, doing your stats, and you're, you're dealing with psychologists. Um, you start off learning like S and C stuff, even though you're not really that into it at that age. Even now, I remember like learning stuff about doing it now. You know, I remember learning that all just all through since I was 14, 15, going all the way through the the national setup, and then. Um, so you start off in like the under 16 squad, then you always want to get in the under 18 squad because they get more kind of like perks, you know, more balls and clothes and hats and stuff. And you go, oh, I want to get that stuff. Yeah. And then when you get, when we started, when I got to like 17, uh, there was like three juniors, the top three juniors got to go with the men's squad to um, Dubai for a month's training camp, which was a big deal at the time, like all, all the month of November, I think it was. So I uh, got that, went there and went to Dubai for like three, four years in a row. Um, every every winter, just uh, like practicing with the team there. Then I started traveling South Africa, Australia and with the men's team all the way through. And it's quite good as well because when you go with them, you kind of get linked in with um, Adidas and you get to choose like Titleist and Taylor made for like balls and gloves. So like, which helps out a lot when you're a young kid, you know, you're getting all with like 20 dozen balls a year and yeah. You know, like 30 gloves, you don't need to pay for all that stuff. So it's, it's quite a big, big help. Yeah. It's gearing you up as if like you are a, a tour player, but on a smaller level, really, isn't it? Definitely. It definitely felt like you're a tour player as well. I mean, you're, I played tournaments all over the world as an amateur, like Australia, South Africa, and all the countries in Europe, all their national tournaments. And um, you, you feel as if like this is your tour, you know, like yeah. it's a tour. And also I was a full-time amateur as well, so it felt like a job anyway. Yeah. Um, so it, it did, even when I turned pro, I didn't really feel much to really change just because I was already living a kind of pro, pro life, trying to get better every day than, than I am now as well. Yeah, well, talk, talk to us about those big tournaments then that you've just been mentioning there. You're travelling the world and playing the tournaments. You're talking like the big amateurs like the US Am and the mm. Australian and stuff. What was that like? Unbelievable, yeah. Playing these tournaments, uh, playing against some of the like guys now who are just like proper killing it. Deschambeau's and... Lingasks and obviously grew up playing with Robert McIntyre who's obviously just top 40th in the world right now or something just best lefty in the world now by, by yeah, right best lefty in the world yeah, yeah. Um, and he's just playing amazing so there's so many stuff like that when you, even when you, even like seeing him playing really well I've played with him since I was really like we were on the same set up playing all these tournaments when we were like 13 years old yeah um, first met him when I was like 11 or something and it's amazing how you grow up with him, but it also like motivates you because you think if he can do it 
you know, just a young lad for Oban doing what I'm doing. Like, yeah. I can push on and try and reach there as well. And playing all the US amateur twice, um, played with some fantastic players, and never felt like I could, never felt like they were, I was a million miles away from always felt like my game could compete with them. And, um, but yeah, just dealing with, the, even just, I remember at the start, struggling a little bit, traveling to like Dubai and even like South Africa and stuff like that with like sleeping patterns because of time differences. Yeah. And I was always just a kind of comfort eater. Just eat like comfort food. And then when you go to these places, you need to eat all this different food and stuff like that. So doing that was a big part of the journey, just learning how to deal with traveling. As you know, also playing one, two, you need to just travel week in, week out and just deal with stuff. And sometimes just need to play an accurate and yeah. just deal with it. You know, it's just part of it. Massive, it, yeah. So what, what, who, who was on, so you mentioned Bryson there. Did you actually play against Bryson, did you? I never actually played against them. I played, I got into the Walker Cup team when I was 19. Um, I was the youngest in the both teams at the time. And I uh, I played against Maverick McNeely in the singles. Yeah, doing well uh, last week in the pro yeah. yeah. Doing well, yeah. Um, sweeped him under the rug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had two putts in the last hole. I had two putts, I remember it well, I had two putts in the last hole to beat him one up. He was about 12 foot away and I was about 25 feet. He was yeah. putting for par and I was putting for birdie. So I think he just lagged this down there. Game over. Knocked it like five, six feet by. Thinking, <laughs> he's hold it. He's hold it. And I've got the five, six footer to win. And I'm just thinking, oh my days. <laughs> everyone, everyone watching and everything. I was just like, I can't even remember hitting it now, to be honest. But <laughs> you know, managed, to, managed to sneak in the side. <laughs> um, and then the next, I played against Bo Hosler as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and we were we were all square playing the last, and he it was a Royal Living Saint Anne's. Don't mm-hmm. you play there? And we both had quite good drives and hit it about twenty five feet again, middle of the green, quite a good shot, I thought. And then he hit it to literally that, which oh. was impressive. And I had just missed my putt, and, and he uh, yeah. he tapped it, he tapped it, and just gave him it. So, um, but no, it was good playing against them. And just and we won the Open Cup that year as well, so that was quite a good. Uh, by some margin, it wasn't just a win, that. <laughs> oh, I know we 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 smashed them. It was a it was a good one. It was like the, we play that course every year in the Leatherman Trophy. It's got a big amateur event. Yeah, and, and we play it in like April that tournament in the worst conditions like ever. We play April. The course is supposed to be like firm and fast and pure greens. And we when we play it at the start of April in that tournament, it's soaking wet, so rainy, so windy. And um, they just played so long. So I think when we turned up to the tournament, the course felt a lot easier, yeah. you know, for that event. And also it was still windy. And obviously we were a bit more used to the wind. Oh, of course. Like you'd think just dealing with the kind of conditions and they just couldn't kind of handle it. But yeah, uh, it, was, it was a good, really good time. That must just be more inspiration on top of inspiration once you've beat him and then you see him like coming second on the PJ Tour. And- yeah, I know. He's a really nice guy, actually. We still spoke for quite a while. Um, he's, he's a really nice guy. All the guys are, are so nice. There's no one that's you know not good, not good guys. But yeah, it's inspirational. I actually watch the golf there that Sunday there, and just, make, just makes you eager to get out the course yourself to get yeah. playing and try and get some results on the board. You know. Yeah, definitely. Just before we move on to your pro career, there you and I see obviously thirteen and fourteen. You want some amazing by the by the way, the first player to hold all of those three events in one go which is some going just talk us through that experience before you turn pro in the lead up to the Walker Cup uh, yeah well I went to um, high school in the America when I was like 14, 15 um, playing with it. and I used to fly, I used to come home to play all the national tournaments as well because I loved it so much and I didn't want to miss out on the, the kind of all the the kind of banter the team were having and all the kit that everyone got and stuff like that I always wanted to come home and get all the kind of goodies so I was lucky that I went to the States uh, for high school. I used to come back and play all the all the tournaments. Um, started doing quite well. And then I played the British Boys, which was in the summer. Um, and I won that. And then the next, and that, and then that, a few months after that, I won the Scottish Boys stroke play. Yeah. Which was quite cool. And then the next year, I won the Scottish match play championship as well. I held, so I held them all, and then I was the first person to do that. And I don't know how whatever since so long or something. Yeah. But um, no, it was really, really, really cool. And I remember just thinking, like, it just uh, the time it just felt like quite easy, you know, like just felt like I'm oh, really, really good. And then you just kind of roll on from there. It was, it was a good, really good time. Yeah. 
What was the reasons for going to high school in America? Is this a bit of a different one that we've never heard before? Yeah, I went over um, just literally because the weather in Scotland was so bad. That was the first reason. I just thought I just need to get out of here and practice and try and get better. And that was my initial plan was to go to college in the States. Yeah. So I remember playing a, a junior event, like an American junior event, um, at the Gainesville, where the Florida Gator School is. Yeah. And one of their, their kind of coaching system watching me. And um, they seemed like quite keen on having me go to the, the Florida Gator School uh, college system. And I was, I was really keen on that. But once the... I started coming back and started playing quite well. And I got in the Walker Cup when I was 19 after come, just coming back as well. I thought, I don't really want to spend the four years kind of doing all that and just kind of stay amateur for another couple of years and then just turn pro. So I did that. Um, don't know if it was the best idea or not, but at the time it just felt right. And um, it's worked quite well for me so far. So not really any complaints. And it was just, uh, the initial plan was to go over to this, the college system, but after doing the high school, I just thought, oh, can't bother. One another four <laughs> yeah. years of school, yeah. Yeah. Where about where about did you go to high school? I went to Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, where the the heritage is there. Yeah. What are you saying? There's more golf courses than houses on Hilton Head Island. Oh, it's crazy! It's, <laughs> like, all the houses are on golf courses. I think. <laughs> oh, it's true. It's like it's like key line with houses. Yeah. Like, oh, where do you live? And it's like Oyster Reef. And I'm like, oh, and that golf course there. You know, it's like, where do you live? Wexford on the golf course there. It's crazy how it's just so, it's like golf heaven. Yeah, it's um, golf paradise, yeah, definitely. I've played at Wexford. Oh. you played at Wexford? Yeah, yeah, yeah unbelievable, man. Yeah, the courses there, are, every course there is just so, so good. No, they don't know how, how lucky they are. So I've got some friends there that, that play um, as pros now as well, good players, and they, they're over there practicing right now. And like putting videos on Instagram and stuff, I'm just thinking, oh, ah, they yeah. do not know how lucky they are. It's just yeah. unbelievable. Get the block button on. I know. And I'm at the body range, blowing a gale, pressing a rain, and I'm just grinding away. It's crazy. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Mm. So yeah, you make the decision to turn pro then in 2016. What was the? What was the? Obviously, the, by the time you'd finished the Ryder Cup at the end of 15, what was the reason for the delay in turning pro for a year? Did you just want to try something more out or? Yeah, I just felt like I was still a bit young and stuff. Just I was just nine, just turned nineteen. I just thought, just chilling and just enjoying the ride. Just keep trying to get better. Yeah. And then I played another year as amateur, played quite well. And I was going to stay amateur and try and make the next uh, Walker Cup. But at the time, um, I was looking at getting an invite to the Dunhill Links Championship and a few like European Tour events and Challenge events. I was already playing Challenger events as an amateur as well that year. Yeah. Uh, with invites and did quite well and making cuts. And I thought, I feel quite good. And then um, I was going to sign with Taylor Maiden Adidas. And I just felt like it was just after another year as an amateur. Uh, I was 20 and I'm going to get an invite to Dunhill Links Championship, European Tour events, which everyone wants to do and play these tournaments, isn't it? And I thought, just go for it and see what happens. And then I remember starting out um, these tournaments like Dunhill. It's a three rounds, you play three rounds on Kings Barnes, Crown Estate and St Andrews. Yeah. And then um, the last days on St Andrews. And I've played all these courses a million times, just obviously been from here and going to St Andrews since I was a kid. And I, I remember getting an invite and just being so excited. Got there on the Sunday morning, just played around, played around, played around. On the range, hitting balls, because I was so excited that pro debut, I'm playing Dunhill and I'm hitting all these balls and next to all these like stars of the game or whatever I thought at the time. And then um, I remember the tournament starting, I was just knackered. Oh. I was just, honestly, I was just yeah. knackered. I was, I'd, I'd played so, so much. I remember like just playing um, so much and it was just crazy. Like now when I look back, it was all proper learning experience because like I, I know what I'm doing. Like, I've, like my amateur tournaments, I would never just play, 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 go to the range, go to the putting range, just stay there all day because I was like, you know, in the van, the tour <laughs> vans, in the tailor made van, getting my Adidas stuff, getting my tailor made And now I know, I know what I'm doing, you know, it's like I know a routine what works for me and just stick with it, you know, it's just I'm a bit immature at the time. You know, when you when you played the Walker Cup then and you've obviously stayed out. Rider, uh, Walker Cup, sorry, yeah, he said Walker, Rider. Yeah, he said Rider, didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad that you just said that because I was going to 
Cup. <laughs> 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 that. So you know you've played you've played Morgan Cup there, and then you've um, you've stayed amateur. What sorts of fun, how are you funding that? Are you are you've got sponsors or like you know? Because um, this is professional. It's all about money, you see. So we're just wondering. As my, my amateur career, do you mean? Yeah. The, the Scottish Golf Union at the time. Oh, they, they, still at that day, yeah. Yeah, okay. they funded everything. They funded me going to the US Amateur. Oh, they funded me just playing everywhere. And um, so, like, so, so lucky. Like, at the time, I didn't even realize how lucky I was. I just thought, oh, I was going to play tournaments. Well, and that was it. But like now, when I look back, I think so good, so lucky. Even I know this, the Scottish Golf Union isn't as strong now. They don't get the kind of government funding that they used to. Right. And uh, some, of the, some of the guys don't get as lucky as we get with well, the tournaments and even like, the kit we used to get was incredible and um, so it was them they funded everything oh, for nice. me like going all the way to like America and all, all big big tournaments even when I went myself not even with the team they were they funded it all which was which was very lucky yeah that's, that's fantastic uh, that yeah mm-hmm. and they get they, they, when you start as well well for them they like assign you to a coach in your region which is a Scottish national coach um, I got assigned to a coach at the time um, when I was like 13 and I'm still with them now and it's just like the habits you do right the same kind of stuff you know similarities in your swing yeah and it's just so yeah it's a really it's a really really good setup when I was coming through the it's, it's through not luck though is it because obviously they can see something in you and it's it's paying dividends in it with that so yeah isn't it? So, yeah, yeah I remember doing like some tournaments and I had to go to like a talent ID day and it was a massive deal I was so nervous in the car on the way down and stuff like that like oh my god talent ID day today and stuff my dad said, like, just be yourself, just swing your, just swing it the way you swing it and stuff. And I remember coming out thinking, oh, I was so nerve wracking after a few hours. But then, um, yeah, you, once you get in and you get you get your coach and you just start working on it together, it just feels like a wee, a wee family. You start off your, your little team. Yeah. Um, and you just kind of work on it together and the coaching, the co- I'm still with my coach is, is brilliant, yeah. And how did, how did you find that transition then from amateur to professional when you, when you made the decision to go pro? Was it was it a big change for you, or was it just natural? It was. I found it quite hard at the start, to be honest. Um, I found the the main tour starts that I got like quite stressful. I remember thinking it was it was so brilliant being there, but like I wanted it that much. That I wanted it every week. That I just I just found it like I just tried so hard to do good. Yeah. Like rather than it was just like I'm just here for one week, you know, it was like I've got an invite, like you know, you get an invite like last minute or you've got an you're into like Portugal Masters and it's just like oh you get there and it was so good that you just think I just want this now and you, you I feel like you just put so much pressure on yourself to do well. That's yeah. why I always get quite um I admire guys that kind of start off with some like invites that on the main tour and just like just take off straight away. Cause it's like it is quite a lot of pressure and it's quite quite a lot of kind of demand of the week as well because you can't just people are like wanting to speak to you and you need to deal with like the the kind of people around the tour and don't even know where to get your stroke saver and stuff like that you know and you're just yeah. kind of like you know trying to figure it out and um I did quite well in a couple but I remember finding it quite uh, stressful that um and then I started getting invites on the chance tour as well eight invites I got on chance tour and did a lot lot better there um Finished my first one like fourth place and had like eight top tens in my first season on the Challenge Tour and quite high up the up the rankings. Finished like thirty fourth in the rankings that year in Challenge Tour, so that got me a little bit of a category on main tour for the next year, and then um, full category on Challenge Tour as well, just through invites on on there. So that worked out worked out quite well. Yeah, would you put that down to age then? You know, because you're quite young, aren't you, when you're coming out of Walker Cup? Yeah. To- the pro, I, I don't know if it's age or it's just yourself. I think different, everyone's different, you know. And like some people just just roll with it, and it just doesn't seem to bother them, or they just don't think about it, you know. And yeah. and everyone's got their own timing. Like you know, there's not one bus to catch to get onto the European Tour. Everyone's got their own route, and I think or the PGA Tour or playing in majors or everyone does their own thing. And I think. Um, Maybe at the time, I think my game was ready. Maybe mentally, I just wasn't. Um, I wasn't as ready as I, as I thought I was. Uh, and but I don't. I don't know if it's. I don't think it was the age. Maybe for me, it was my age. But like for someone else, you know that. I know my friend Connor turned pro 
after the walk. He's a year older than me. He turned pro after the Walker Cup in Los LA. And he was about 21, 22. And he started off with invites, Dunhill and Portugal Masters, just like, like I kind of did. And he just rolled with it. It's just like, I think it just came to him so easy. He just nice. did amazing. He finished like 12, like 30th and Dunhill. was playing with like Rory and stuff. And I think he just really matured in the head and it just was easier. He just found it a lot easier. Which can I now? I, now when I go to tournaments, it doesn't phase me at all. Like just playing in the big tournaments and seeing all the the, the guys that yeah. are supposed to be like stars of the game and stuff. You just kind of all right, guys, how you doing? It's just like your workplace, and it's just become normal after yeah. a while. But at the time, and I made it a bigger deal in my head than it actually was. Yeah. So what you, you talked about earlier about obviously Scottish boys introducing strength and conditioning coaches and mm-hmm. points and yeah, you go into these big to- amateur tournaments and the psychologist there. What type of team did you have around you when you turned professional? Did you have a full setup and you ready to go? Um. Yeah, I was still kind of using the kind of Scottish system when I first turned pro as well, which was good that I could still kind of bounce off them and use that stuff. Um. But then, as you kind of keep going, you get a bit older, you kind of find your own people that you deal with maybe closer to home and stuff. So I've got my own strength and conditioning people now. I deal with gold medal personal training, which is just about five minute drive from me down the road. And it's like that guy does MMA and he knows about all the muscle movements and uh, he studies it a lot. So I, I, do, I go to him and we work on our stuff. Um, and then just like your family, just people that you can trust and you just, that you, you know is going to really want the best the best for you you know and you just kind of work it out yourself after a while I think that's kind of what's hard as well at the start you just don't have like right team but once you kind of glue everything together and you, you sort everything out it's, it feels easier yeah and then what about mentally then if it's like psychology wise have you got have you picked your own one of them as well or are you still with the um, I've tried to do some stuff before with that with like psychology stuff and I, I always feel like it's quite good but in the end, I always feel like it just comes down to yourself, you know. Um, and so much, there's only so much someone can tell you before, and then you just need to tell yourself, right? Yeah. Embrace all the moments and just do what it's fair, but just get on with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If and get on with it and just focus, <laughs> and that's it. It's not. There's no kind of round, right way or wrong way. You just need to pick yourself up and, and go for it when they go and get stuff. And um, having just like honest people around me just like my dad my brother my mates just saying fucking go for it yeah mm-hmm. alright that's good enough for you yeah, that's good enough for me so um, maybe if I find someone who's and when I start doing better and maybe find someone else that's kind of works really well with other players maybe that will work for me I've not really dealt with anyone that's made a big difference so far though. psychologist well, wise, psychologist wise yeah it's all, it's all good saying that you're going to see a psychologist, but if, if they're going to tell you to forget your bad shots and you're out there and, and you're on your own, and you yeah. forget your bad shots, it's, a, it's hard to implement, isn't it? I know, especially when you're Thomas Loss and you're club away. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it's true, you just need to just go on with it and just deal with it yourself. I think after doing it for a while and making the mistakes, you kind of learn from it yourself and just, that's it, yeah. You need to make mistakes, don't you, so you know, but that didn't work, or yeah, that works, you know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah. So the, on the on the, the season coming up, now it's, I can see you've got a Category 18 exemption. Just talk to what, what mm-hmm. just because I know there's different categories in the European Tour. <laughs> yeah, so I got um, my category, so last, not last year, the year before, it's the top 15 on chance to get the full, their full card, which goes into Category 15, which gets you into basically all the events on the main tour. Um, I finished 25th on the rankings, so it goes from 16 to 30, get go category 18, which is just behind the Q school guys. Okay. Um, so I get into like maybe like half the events. Uh, last year I got into all the events. I played like 20 events just because of Corona and people not wanting to travel or whatever. Um, it just depends on different. So this year I probably get into maybe about 15, 16 events yeah. on the main tour, which is still... Um, still pretty good and you can still you can still keep your card from that if you play well enough enough to but, um, it, yeah yeah and keep your card but I'll probably obviously with that I've got my full full chance to recover where I can play where I want and um, I'll play both and then decide what one I'm starting to play better and then focus on it you know focus on that rather than trying to chase the two the two chickens I think that seems a bit a bit difficult and a bit 
been kind of reasonable. I'd rather just focus. Well, I'll, I'll play a bit both to start, and then whatever when I get my results on, I'll just focus on it and just and just dig in. But maybe if I'm playing to start off well in the main tour, I can um, focus there and try and get a card. And if I start off well in Chance Tour, I can try and just top 20 this year on Chance Tour for the main card as well. So I might just focus on there and try and get a card on a full card from that, that side of things. You'll get the full 15 category with that, will you? Yeah, well, yeah, talk to you. I get the full, the full fifteen. So, mm. and then if I start well on main tour and it's top one, one ten, I keep the cards. Right? So, might just do that, but it just depends on your results and how you're doing at the time. Of course. Yeah, well, what we've found is just like you saying you're talking about playing both tours. Because what we've found, I spoke to a few people that said that the challenge tour, like you need to make a lot, a lot of birdies, and on the main tour, you know, power and stuff can be a good score. So. Then we spoke to Chris Hansen, he said main tour suited him more than challenge. So have you found that? Uh, I, I, I totally know what he means. Like on the main tour, like the cuts are probably higher. Like you shoot like le- you, you can not play great and shoot like level one under and you make the cut and you think it's made the cut there. Like um but then the chance to it's like sometimes he cuts four, five, six under. But th- I would say that's just because the rough's not as thick. The greens the complexes are a bit flatter, you know. It's more more resort course. Yeah, yeah. still really nice, good, t- tough courses. But you can hit a bad drive and still make a birdie. When on the main tour, you hit a bad drive, you're probably going to make a bogey unless you can pitch it out and get them down. You know. Yeah. Um. But I would definitely agree with with Chris there. I've played with Chris and met him a good few times on the on the, on the chance tour when he was playing. And yeah, it's true. On the chance tour, it's just a, a birdie fest. But on the main tour, it's it's just ticking the right, ticking the boxes, getting the fairway greens and pars. Um, par can be your best pal. Yeah. And is that is that what you're just going to do then? Just go obviously play, then play them, and just see where what what game you're bringing to the table, and then pick a tour. Yeah, definitely. Like I started doing quite well in main tour last year for a few events, and um, got an invite to like Scottish Open, and um. Did quite well there and played quite well while drama and a few tough courses. And if I started to do that again, I'd probably just stick with it. But um, you just need to wait and see how, how things go and how you're how you're performing and thing. Well, I was going to ask you about the the Scottish Open there because is that your first ever Rolex Series event? Is it that one? And how does, yeah. that, how does that compare to it? Just a normal event because obviously you get all the top players in the world turning up to that one, don't you? Yeah, I mean you got all the top players. Anyway, we just get a few extra ones, and that is because the money's more. There, so that that's the big difference: the money and the and the Rolex events playing for eight million dollars, which is a lot. When, but the week before I, I got in because the week before I played quite well in Ireland. Yes. Um, and then I got a I got an an invite when I, I actually three putted the last uh, hole in the Irish Open, the seventy second hole, and I came off raging, finishing went from finishing like. 10th to 14th or whatever I remember thinking I can't believe that you know like whatever and I came off the last green and the guy was like oh can we speak to you after you your card I'm like don't, don't let me see I just see past the arse you know <laughs> but I didn't say that I was just thinking that in my head yeah. signed my card and I came out and he was like oh you by the way how do you feel you get an invite to Scottish Open next week so that's not saying I was like oh fuck didn't he pass but all of a sudden didn't really care too much about my yeah. my three foot but no that was good I think just like getting that invite and playing well before gave me quite a lot of confidence. And I went out and played the next week as well, Scottish Open, which I've always wanted to play. I used to go and watch it when I was a kid and stuff. Um, and playing there and playing with some big players and uh, and playing quite well it gives you a lot of confidence. Right. I remember as well, like my dad really wanted to come to the practice rounds and watch and stuff like that. Um, so he came with me and I'm walking... I was walking down the, the range and stuff and I seen like Eduardo Molinari and like Westwood and stuff and like some of these top players, but I just played with them a couple of weeks before in, in Valderrama. Yeah. Um and so I was walking and my dad was like, look, there was there. and they were like, I am, I am. my dad's like, How the fuck do you know them? <laughs> <laughs> which is quite which is quite good. And I was like, Shut up, you come on, you keep your head on. <laughs> because I've like played and stuff. Like it does make it does make you feel a bit more comfortable though. Like because when you start playing the terms, you play with the guys and you kinda of don't starts to not bother you as much. Um I remember I think that was quite funny. My dad was like, Here's that and they were like, All right, you in, are you in? And I was like, Fuck you know him. <laughs> <laughs> so Which is great. Uh, 
Yeah, you better get laughed, and then we're going out. No, we had this player, David Shackley, again, and he, he went onto the seniors tour, and then he was playing with his, with his idols, and he realised that they were just humans. Who's that? Uh, David Shackley, his name is. Yeah, I know, you, that is what you realise, they're just so normal. And yeah. I, I've actually played with, with David, I played with him in a mixed uh, challenge event. Stay sure event, um, women's ladies European tour event thing at event a while ago. He, 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 I remember him talking to him about that there as well, saying like how much his life's changed and stuff. But just yeah. going out there and just realizing everyone's just dead, not like really normal people. And it is true. I even, even just myself, just playing with some of the kind of the top players now that went on European tour. You can think, even just like, like guys like Lucas Beregard and Toby yeah. Olsen and stuff like that, like really, really good players who went on the tour and. Then, and then you kind of play with them. You think like, I think I can do this. You know, I can I can compete with these guys. And you realise they are just normal, and they, they do hit bad shots at the start. I remember thinking nobody hit bad shots. They just they hit just as many as you, but they deal with it better. You know. Yeah. As well, we, we was just just interviewing a few like top players. We're realising like they're just normal lads, and we just have a little chat and. The yeah. way you know, I've got a category, I've got this, and I'm half sitting there thinking, I'd love to get a category. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of work behind the, behind the scenes that I don't think people realise, and a lot of, oh, a lot of my blood, sweat and tears that people say just to like, get there in the start, but um, but yeah, it's like, like golf, it's, it's the same, I can speak to people in, in my local local range, they're like, I'm rubbish, and I was like, when was the last time you played? They're like, a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, that's the thing. It's, I, I did it rubbish as well, but I didn't play for a couple of weeks. Yeah, exactly, just, yeah. with, with golf, you just need to be practicing all the time, working on stuff, thinking about stuff just to get um, to get better. It's not a game where you can just like chill and have a couple of cronies like you boys are, turn up the next morning and <laughs> <at> 65. You've <laughs> got the good life, yeah, by the sounds of it. Do you know you get an invite? So obviously before you three put it that, the, you were obviously already getting an invite to the Scottish Open, so yeah. how did work? Like, who, who did they pick? Like, how is it? Do you know? Do you know? Yeah. I think the sponsors and stuff like that, the people who run the tournament, pick the, they pick, they only get a, a limited amount. And I actually know how I get in because I met the guys the next week, the American boys who run the, who run Renaissance and run the tournament. They had two sponsor invites left. And then my friend Connor Syme was looking like getting an invite. So I was thinking maybe I'd have a chance. Um, but he was looking like an invite because he's quite a high category, but he was also playing really, really well that year. He finished like being in contention like a bunch of times. And um he was uh gonna get an invite because Justin Rose was thinking about not coming over from the States. There was a tournament week before. Yeah. So it, it was kind of relying on him. And the people who run Renaissance run um the company, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, um, but they run the company who runs the kind of everything that's going on. So they had the two invites, so they were flying over Justin Rose and Jimmy Walker. But then after that tournament, they didn't want to come. Right. So they gave them out to the next two top Scottish players. Uh, it was me and Connor. So I was thinking to myself, cheers, Jimmy, cheers, Justin. <laughs> 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 Shit there, sure. It was quite cool. Yeah, I remember. I remember playing as well, thinking to myself, obviously top tens and stuff like that get get your chance to get in. So I remember being quite raging at that three putt, thinking that might have been to finish tied tenth or whatever oh, to yeah. get me into the Scottish Open, or what, you know. And then when I met, when I didn't and I finished like fourteenth or whatever and got in there, got in anyway, I was like, yeah, perfect, you know, buzzing. And it was good to come go into that tournament coming off a of, back of a bit of form. But invites, it's it's politics and sponsors and. Who you know, it's it's a, it's tough. Which, but the invites are always merited. To be fair, it's not. Although it's politics and stuff like that, they're always merited. Like guys who are top players get an invite because it's a sponsor and they do things for them. Or it went to me and Connor because we were the next two top Scottish players. You know, so you need to you need to earn it at the same time. Yeah, definitely. There is some sort of order to it. Like it's not just the yeah. coming up. Yeah, so exactly. It's not just like oh, he's Tom Dick and Harry's are playing. You know, it's just. Yeah. It's there is structure. There is a structure behind it. So yeah, though it's good though because those opportunities can be life changing. Because like you say there, and I know we didn't have the open this year, but normally as is the top two or top three out of the Scottish Open get a, get a place in the open, don't they? Yeah, a couple of good weeks you get the invite and you can see yourself playing in a, in a major championship, can't you? No, I know it's it's amazing. And even like me that week, um, I played quite well and I finished thirtieth or whatever. And with that event being a lot more money, you get quite a big payday, and all of a sudden you, you're 
a bit more chilled where you've got um you've made a little bit of money that you can go and go and play and you've got buy, a, buy a, nice car. a bit more relaxed behind you. <laughs> hmm? Buy a nice Please. car. <laughs> buy a nice car, exactly. You, you just feel though, oh good to, you know, especially with last year with COVID and not having as many events, it was a yeah. it was tough. Yeah. Most good, and then I can see. I see there. Obviously, you, you've um, you, you signed with Modest Golf, didn't you? We've we've, mm-hmm. we've been doing some in, in research on Modest Golf because it's really like what what they're doing. What's what do you think of Modest Golf? And what they're doing with the game? It's Modest is as a fantastic company. It's um, they're so into like their players. It's quite a boutique company. It's quite small, and all their players are like really well kind of like thought of. Um, they've got a kind of like strategy where they like to have guys work ethics got to be good. You know, you they don't just want they don't just sign kind of any anybody. Yeah. And um they're they're great what they're doing for the game. They're trying to involve everyone. Um they've got Brendan, they just signed boy Brendan as well, who's That's top it. five disabled golfer. I, I, he got an invite to the um, European Tour event this year at the English Championship at the Belfry. Being that, yeah. And I, I, um, I played with him in the practice round because we're with, both with Modest and stuff, and I've met him a few times, and he's absolutely fantastic player. Yeah. And then um, they've got the, some women player, they've got quite a lot of women they want and stuff like that, and Olivia are really good players, and they're just so in- inclusive and trying to bring golf together and bring, take it to the next level. Awesome. And obviously having having Niall um, kind of run run the run the show, it's quite a good person to have dealing with things, and he can bring a lot of kind of sponsors or whatever you know he knows a lot of people and a lot of connections so it can open a lot of doors for you yeah and you can see he's got a big passion for the game as well can't you just oh, loves it. He loves it yeah he loves it i played with him a few times now and just you know, he only plays the best courses and plays, he just loves it and he gives himself enough mulligan, mulligans that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> i've seen him mulligan he- he was talking about he was saying, Yeah, I've played Augusta, and I know golf fans will be raging that I have played Augusta over them. So yeah, he's, he's just, played Augusta. He, he's a member at Wentworth. I played at Wentworth with him. He's just a member there, just walks about it, like loving it, and just in the pro shop buying hats and jerseys with Wentworth on it and stuff like that. And just like everyone, just like everyone, like us, you know, just loves golf and just can't wait to go and play. And so normal. So, but uh, yeah, he's obviously quite a big, big star, but he's as normal as you can be. Yeah, that's, that way, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good that mm. you're singing. Uh, we had Richard Mansell on uh, yesterday and he said the yeah. same thing about Modest loves it, loves everything about it. So it's good that you're both saying the same sort of stuff. You know yeah, I mean? definitely. Like they deal with you so well, like, they're always in contact, everything okay. There's always like stuff, got stuff going on for you to try and make things better, especially during lockdown. They're always kind of coming up with things just to keep you going, and then it's just great. So yeah, and they'll say Richard with them as well. So He's loving it because you can't not really. Yeah, brilliant. What are the what's the, what's the goals moving forward? Twenty twenty one season. Then now, what's the, what's on the goal list? My goals for this year is to try and get a win. I'd say that's kind of the only thing I've not done since I've been a pro. Yeah, twenty second and third and fourth and everywhere else, and I just feel like I'd love to just get a win, Challenge Tour, European Tour, wherever it comes. I'd I'd be happy. And I think just I'm looking forward to the kind of opportunity to get the get the emotions going again where you can try and get that breakthrough and yeah. hopefully I can come out on top and deal with it and bring like over the line. Um, and that's definitely my main goal just for the year. I like anything else. I think if you win, you're playing well, you can, everything else takes care of itself and well, it does, yeah. your golf does the talking for you. So um, I'd say that's my, my definitely my goal and then everything else will take care of itself. Now we jumped the gun on the goals question. One thing we need to ask you, what's your most exciting time as a golfer? Most exciting moment as a golfer? I would say, um, I would definitely say Walker Cup. I had, when I hold a, a couple of putts in the Walker Cup was just so exciting. Nice. Um, a couple of incredible memories. My one like the boys amateur as well with family being there and a lot of people watching. Dealing with kind of everything there was exciting. Then as a pro, um, just like my dad coming to watch me in the Scottish Open, getting an invite that week, playing well, coming just driving a couple hours home and people being waiting for you at home and stuff like that. Um, I say that's my most exciting time. It's just when everyone seems involved and your team just gets a lot of joy from you doing well. I think that's definitely my my most exciting times as I go as a kind of junior amateur and professional for sure. Yeah. 
you know, see, we spoke earlier speaking about the rise of Bobby McIntyre and obviously what he's done in the game getting into top Bobby, three. Uh, Bobby, yeah, that's what we call him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's best mate, so <laughs> <laughs> Got you on toast there. He has got me on toast. Is it hot Yeah, well, big Bobby, um, best left hander in the world. The so obviously his rise speaks for itself. We've we've seen that. Do you mm-hmm. do you look at them? And are you thinking ride the cup this year? Are you thinking good start? Is that even contemplating your mind at the moment to think good season? No. push it or not? Is that no? I think you just need to be reasonable as well and know that where my status is and stuff like that and the amount of players and how good the standard is I feel like you need to build your way to do that kind of thing um, it's not something that you can just be like boom sudden like when I, when I played Walker Cup I kind of like played well for a couple of years all the way until it was like you're in it's not like you can just go bang 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 maybe you could but you could but I feel as if you need to work you need to work your way up to it uh, like Bob has and like everyone who will, will be in that team would have done. Yeah. Um, just the way it is. But uh, no, I'd still love to play in the Ryder Cup one day. Hopefully not this year, but in a couple of years. Yeah. Notice you called him Bob there. Does anybody call him Bobby? Or is that just me? <laughs> yeah. so I, think you can call him, I think you can call him what you want. I call him a lot worse names, that's for sure. His name's Robert. Okay, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> nah, you call him Bob, Bobby. Nah, never, nah, he's not... I think you're thinking of Bobby Firmino. Maybe. <laughs> I'm never thinking of him. <laughs> I love him when Mark gets battered by everyone. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Well, we won't take up too much of your time. Any of you and me love, love talking to you there. It's been such another easy chat. We love meeting people. It's brilliant. No, it was good fun. One more good question. Fun. We always ask that we got, we're building up quite a repertoire of, of um, or what's it, what is it called? Like a category of people that are going to be playing in the Bogey Boys Golf Day that we're going to be putting mm-hmm. up. We'll work it around the tours if you're there. The invite's there if you want to come down and play. 100%. I'd love it. I'd love it. Yeah, it'd be great. Can't wait. Where are you going to play? Probably all. Probably all. <laughs> Probably all. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. We'll have a nap. No, that'd be good. Let me know when it's on and I'll make, I'll make a trip. We will do, yeah. 100%, mate. Yeah, I appreciate you. Cheers, guys. Appreciate you taking the time. We wish you the best of luck this season, mate. Hope you do get that win. I'm sure you will. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers. Nice to meet you. Give Bobby a little message for us there. Say so we want to chat with him. <laughs> I'll give Bobby, I'll pass your number on him to he's a good mate. Isn't it right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, you. Bye bye. Bye The beer called, though? That's for real. Good. 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 You've got to celebrate. You've got to celebrate. And then yeah. so I've seen bits, and I know that you've always got that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but look, we wish you the best of luck for the rest what of the What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs>